Come on, you said yesterday, that's not my fault. Come on, you've got a chuck shot. Chuck, 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 chuck. Anyone seen my overall? There's some teams in the back of Oh, thank you. Andy, Josh, it's ten past. Where's Andy? Where's Andy? Who's my rucksack? Me, and it wasn't the way. Right, Jade, I want you in the car. Come on, get your shoes on. Andy, come on. Let's go. Andy, we are going now. Wait, wait, wait. You go, sir. You've got your bus See you later. Oh, I can get my bus first. Yes, you did. Come on, Chris. See you later. So are you. Got your recorder, Jade. Mum, it's not recorded, Dave, today. Yeah, it's That's it? tomorrow. Oh, Jade, it's Now you get that. He's left Erinsborough. He left a note for Dan. I got up to go to work at the stables and then I found it. Hey, you got stuck in me yesterday. What did I say? Well, nothing bad. I was just that he's following up on some job. Are you sure about this? I'm sorry. Sorry, let me talk to you. Mum? Everybody's going to be wondering why he's gone. Gonna ask all kinds of tricky questions. Play oh, guessing. Bloody hell, not you again. That's right. Me again. Well, what's that? A warrant to search the house in the garden. Lauren just dropped by to tell me something. Excuse me. But. What's going on? What did they do? What did they do? She's coming. She's. What about any of the way they search themselves? Oh my house, you great mother! What then are the signs of abuse which social workers should look for in children? These may be physical, unexplained cuts and bruises, but they may also be behavioural. Is the child withdrawn, aggressive or unusually introverted? Is there an unspoken atmosphere of fear in the house? It's me. That interfering bloody arsehole bitch is here again. She's got a search warrant this time. So you better have your story straightened. And anything you need to do, you better get done. Adults. What? You know, it's that thing I volunteered for. You lot don't listen to a word I say, do you? This way, please. Detective Superintendent Bennett's waiting for you. Janet Leach, the appropriate adult, sir. Sorry for calling you in at this time of day. Probation and social services had no one available. Do you mind if I ask who it is? It's a 52-year-old man. Well, with learning difficulties. Well, all I can say is that we've been advised to have an appropriate adult. Oh, yes. You have done this before. 
Oh, no, but I've done the training. Ah. Carry on. Howard Ogden, solicitor. Tape recorded interview is being conducted at Gloucester Central Police Station. I'm DC Darren Law, and my colleague here is DC Hazel Savage. And could I have your name, please? Frederick Walter Stephen West. And acting as your legal representative, Howard Ogden. And acting as your appropriate adult. Oh, uh, Janet Leach. You're not here just to observe the interview is conducted fairly, but also to advise Mr. West and facilitate communication with him. I understand. Super. The date is Friday, the 25th of February, 1994. The time is 16.57. Before we set off, I've got to remind you, Fred, that you're still under caution and that you don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but anything you do say may be used in evidence. Do you understand? Yeah. OK. You were arrested earlier today by my colleague here in relation to the murder of your daughter, Heather. Could you tell me in your own words what you know about that? Right, what happened was Heather wanted to leave home, see, and she'd been knocking about with this girl with a red mini and some mini skirt not many car and uh, we were pretty sure she was a lesbian like so m me and rose said hang on a sec you better think about this girl you know give it a night at least so next morning come up and she looked real rough yeah, she'd been crying and so rose says let her go she said i'll go to the bank and draw out 600 pound she can have that and go so Rose goes off, and I'm left in the in the hall with with Heather and in her suitcase, and she's got her hands on her hips, you know, the big lady like. And I say, how about you get a flat up the road? You can have girlfriends up there. And she said, if you don't let me fucking go, I'll give all the kids acid, as LSD like, and they'll jump off the church roof and kill themselves. I said, well, that, that ain't very nice, girl. You're threatening to do that to your own brother and sisters. And she's got a smile on her face, like a sort of smirk, like, try me and I'll do it. So I just lunged at her like that, and then I grabbed her by the throat like that, and I held her there for, I don't know how long, but it was, it was quick, you know, it was real quick, because it's surprising how long you can hold someone by the throat until they, until they, but I can't even, remember to that extent what happened next, but the next minute she's gone blue. And I'm looking at her from head to foot, and I'm, you know, I, what the heck's gone wrong? So I, I put her on the floor and I'm blowing in her mouth, I'm pumping her chest, and, and she kept on getting bluer. And I didn't know what to do, I mean, I hadn't meant to hurt her. And Rose is due back any minute, I'm thinking, geez, I've got to do something, and I was scared. So I was gonna put her in the Wendy house, and then I thought I'd put her in the dustbin. But I couldn't get her in there. So I get this ice saw, you know, with the two prongs at the top and the serrated edges that you use them for cutting blocks of ice. And, and I cut her legs off. And I mean, that was unbearable. I, mean, I, can, I can still hear that in my sleep. And I cut her head off and, and I close her eyes first because. Well, you're not going to take a sword to your own daughter when she's sat there looking at you, are you? And then she fit neatly in the bin. So I push it down to the end of the garden, uh, behind, behind the Wendy house, and then I take her suitcase of clothes and I stuck it out behind the vets on St. Michael's Square River and chucked the rubbish. And then I got Heather from behind the Wendy house and buried her. And I've been meaning to come down here and get all this sorted out before, but I never got round to it. Can I ask if the appropriate adult's all right? Oh, quite all right, thank you. Let's get this clear. You're saying you killed your daughter. But not intentionally. What sort of grave are we looking for? It's just a hole in the ground, about four foot square. And what's in this hole? Well, Heather. How many pieces? Three pieces, two legs, a head and a body. That's four pieces. Are you happy to come to the house and point out where she is? Yeah. Why didn't you tell us all this before, Fred? I wasn't ready. 
Or is it because we're carrying out a search of your property and you're afraid we might find her? No. no. You see, all this is causing stress to Rose, and I don't want that. And the thing I'd like to make clear is that Rose knew nothing about any of this. Time is 17.08 by my watch, and the interview has ended whilst arrangements are made to visit 25 Cromwell Street. This notice explains what happens to the tapes. Can I have a word? Yeah, sure. Is Rose here? No. Got a feeling she's in the building. She's not here. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. She is here. She is I thought they were taking us straight to Charlton. Oh my! Right. You're unbelievable, you lot. It's fucking unbelievable! Hello? Oh, hi, love. It's me. Is everything all right? Yeah. Have you had tea? Sort of. You might have to put Jade to bed. Where are you? I told you I'm at the police station. I'm helping the police with an investigation. What investigation? Yeah, the press officer working on it now. I can't talk about it. I'm really sorry, love. I've got to go. I'll see you later, all right? Bye. <laughs> Stand up, please, issue already. Nothing but the best. Damn stuff, bring your money. What's that? What's that then? Why are you finished? Why are you glad? Spraying this bloke's loft over a strain, is he? We don't have back scratches in the station, Fred. The car ready. We are. Yeah, I know you're from somewhere. Um, I, I'm sure you don't. I don't have to look familiar. I'll be in the first car with uh, Mr. West and his sister, Mr. Arco. And just Heather I buried in that garden. There's more. More? I don't believe it. Not that you can let on to the police, I told you, okay? I keep everything I say in confidence. But you're a good appropriate adult, you already know that. Mrs. Leach? Okay. Already. Let's go. Right on, please, Fred. to Cheltenham Police Station. She's also under arrest. It's a waste of her time and yours. Come on. into this place. Walking through here, building on there. Years of back rate to get it looking tickety-boo. I need to remind you you're still under caution, Fred. You understand? Yes, thank you, Hazel. Can you show us where you buried your daughter, Heather? Remembering what you did when. I try there. there. 
down there. What am I supposed to be looking at? Okay, we're going to get a forensic team to start examining that area. We'll take you back to the station now, apply for an extension of custody, and resume our interview tomorrow. Is there anything else you wish to say? Yes, well, the appropriate adult will be present. Can you attend? Um, yeah, if you want me. I'll sort it then. She's been very helpful so far. Howard Ogden. And acting as your appropriate adult? Lieutenant Leach. have to remind you that you're still under caution, do you understand? Yes, and before you say anything else, me and him just had an argument. Discussion? And I'm telling you now what I just told him. Heather is not in that garden. She's alive and well, and possibly at this moment in Bahrain. She's been recruited to work for a drugs cartel as a drugs runner. They treat her like a queen. She gets in touch now and again to tell me she's all right. She is using a false name. I have no idea what that is, and I will not let her tell me. Now, whether or not you believe in that is entirely up to you. But that's why you found nothing in that garden, and you won't, not even if you dig till kingdom come. And I don't care how much money and time you waste, because you wasted mine, not just now, but in the past. Because there were previous allegations. There was nothing in them. Rape and buggery of two of your children. Yeah, which was never proved. You had me remanded in prison spat at by other prisoners, my younger kids put into care where they still are, poor little lambs, trying to force me to admit that I assaulted trying them. Trying to get to the truth, Fred. You, you turn my house upside down. And we'll do so again. £3,000 that cost me last week. We'll keep on searching till we find Heather. All because of some stupid remark about her being that under the patio. was made by your own daughter, Fred. Anne-Marie said it was a family joke. A joke. To there social you are. workers who, like me, have had concerns about your family for a considerable time. You're the beautifulest woman in Gloucester when you're angry, Hazel. I'm just trying to get to the truth this time, Fred. You're being personal and vindictive. I'm being neither, Fred. Against me and my Rose, who loves our family, you'd do anything for them. Why are you saying this now, Fred? Last night, you took us to the house with Mr Ogden and this lady, and you showed us a grave. You inconvenienced me. So are you trying to inconvenience DC Savage to get back at her? You really saying there's nothing in that grave? Why are you smirking? Who's smirking? You said yesterday you wanted to get all this sorted out. And then I spent a night in a cell thinking what I want is Rose back in our home, I want my children back, I want my house and garden reinstated. We are a family. Well, let's just ask Mrs Leach. As an independent lady, what she thinks. Um, well, 
Uh, he's clearly contradicting what he said last night. Did you hear that, Fred? And I saw the smirk. For the benefit of the tape, PC Roberts has entered the room. Someone saying you don't love your kids. Bet you feel the same way. Bet you're a mother. That's completely irrelevant. Oh, but it's not, you see. I think you understand how deep my feelings are for my family. Don't you? Time for a cup, right, say, Hazel? We can... We can take a refreshment break shortly. Uh, first, I'd like to discuss the information that Detective Superintendent Bennett's just sent from your house. What information? They found some bones in the garden. Well, like I said, I... I want to get all this sorted out. Our pathologist is confident they're human. If I accused you of inconveniencing me, then um, I apologize. You sure you buried Heather all in one place? You what? You didn't scatter any of her body around the garden. No. Because they found another body part in another part of the garden. My God, I think how that could have got there. Well, are, are you suggesting it wasn't part of Heather? It must have been. It was a thigh bone. They've already found two thigh bones. Heather didn't have three legs, did she? Do you have any knowledge how this other bone could have got there, Fred? Yes. Shirley. Shirley who? Robinson. The girl that caused all the trouble. The girl with the red mini. Thank you, yes. See, she uh, lodged with us and I had an affair with her and she got pregnant and <clears throat> she wanted to marry me and she said she was going to tell Rose and there was a bit of an argument, got out of hand somehow and she ended up getting strangled. Where was Rose at this time? In the hospital having a baby. Which baby? Um, Babs. No, uh, no, not Babs. Um, young Rosemary. I'd come back from seeing Rose in the hospital and Shirley and I had this row and I killed her. How? Strangled over a piece of flax. Buried her in the garden? Yeah. And over the babby inside her too. Can't tell you how that's haunted me. I mean about the babby and... <sighs> then killing Shirley, the... The baby would have died too, and I think we'll end there. Does anyone have anything else to say? <laughs> Time is 11.06 and the interview is ended. <laughs>
decided to leave the interviews for today. Oh, OK. Um, Fred needs some clean clothes. I wondered, could you go to the house with Mr Ogden and get them? Um, yeah, all right. And whilst you're at it, could you get some from Mrs West, too? We're still holding her at Cheltenham. OK. Um, does he really have learning difficulties? So why do you need an appropriate adult? Detective Superintendent Bennett's concerned there's no suggestion Mr. West had difficulty understanding any of this. Can you give us anything at all? Can you give us any information at all? Can you go? Can you go? Right at the top, I think. One seven four, one seven four. Go back, Lima. Go back, Lima. Go ahead. Over. You did know she works as a prostitute. I had worked that out. Mm. Clothes. Here. You thought you'd already searched in here? Oh, we're not police. Who the fuck are you then? I'm your dad's solicitor. Well, who's this? Janet Leach, I'm acting as your father's appropriate adult. His what? I've been asked to help him and we've been sent to pick up some clean clothes. So where is Dad? Because no one's told us anything. Gloucester Police Station. I'm afraid he's been arrested on suspicion of murder. Murder of who? If there's murder gone on, it'll be Mum, not Dad. Don't say that about Mum. What the fucking I like? Don't listen to him. Your Mum's all right. Dad's the one. Tell Mum I hope she's all right and we want her home. Please, will you do that for me? West. Jesus. You. This lady's brought you some of your clothes. What? You've been to my house? Rooting round in my things? The police asked me. Fucking cheek! Um, well, well, we were just quickly in and out and we saw Stephen and May. And May said that she hoped you were all right. By what right? By 
by what right, you nosy fucking bitch, do you go into my house and speak to my children and poke about among my private things? Rose. Jesus Christ. Rose, calm down. Who are you anyway? Who are you? She's helping us, Mrs West. She got no right touching my clothing and you got no right arresting me. All we want is to get to the truth. No, it ain't. What you want is for me to say Fred killed our Heather and I helped him. Did you? No, I did not. How many fucking times? You got nothing on me and you know it. Take her back to the cells, please. Come on. Don't touch me. Oh, are you so fucking scared of your little mouse? Little mousey mouse wouldn't say boo to a fucking goose. Bet you're a dirty little lazy too. Mrs. West. That's it, isn't she? They touched me, didn't I? I told you. Sorry about that. It's all right. Look, have a seat. I'll get you a glass of water. Occupational hazard, I'm afraid, that kind of abuse. It's not that. What is it, then? Things have happened, things have been said that I hadn't expected. What things? Has Fred said anything privately to you about any of this? I can't tell you. I owe a duty of confidence. Of course. But if he does try and give you information privately, you can advise him to speak to me. I know. I've done the training. You better get home. Sunday. I know. They need me to go in again. What? The police. Bloody hell, Janet. Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just going in now. Coping? Of course I'm coping. Who says I'm not? So you saying if I carry on you won't support me? Okay, fine. Excuse me. Can I ask? Have you said something to her? What? The organizer of the appropriate adult register. Yes, yes, I have. Did you tell her that I wasn't up to this? No, I did not. Because she rang me and she asked me if I wanted to pull out. Well, I explained it was a very difficult and distressing case. Uh, she's perfectly entitled to give you that opportunity. Well, I won't. Are you quite sure you still feel able to carry on? Yeah, absolutely. Very well. Charlotte, there's been a development. Oh. Fred's indicated that there's another body in the garden. Who? Girl called Alison Chambers. I suspect he's told us because he thinks we'll find the body anyway. I want him to point out the grave. Can you come to the house? Uh, yeah, of course. So here, Fred, this here's where we found bones that you say may belong to Shirley Robinson. Where did you bury Alison Chambers? Well, 
Now you're asking. Yes, I am asking, Fred. Let's see. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm picking something up. Yeah, that's her. Allison. Yeah, she's trying to tell me something. What's she trying to tell you, Fred? Where she is, but I... I don't think I can understand what she's trying to... Yeah, hold on, hold on. Um... Yeah, try there. Now, that's your lot. You'll find no more. What about... Rena? Rena? Your first wife? What about Charmaine? Charmaine? Why are you looking at me like that? Rena had a daughter, Charmaine, who became your stepdaughter. Where are they? Well, you lose, you lose track of you lose track of people, don't you? Well, you said you lost track of Heather, but you killed her and buried her well, in this garden. And you did the same to Shirley Robinson and Alison Chambers. You won't find Rena and Charmaine here, and that I swear. And even if you don't believe me, I know the appropriate adult does, because she understands me in a way that you lot don't. Isn't that so? How could I understand you? You've killed people because you're a woman who can see beneath the surface and a woman who knows remorse when she sees it. What about you lot? The police have found two more bodies in the garden in Gloucester where the remains of the missing schoolgirl Heather West were discovered on Saturday. Her father is charged with her murder. The two new bodies are thought to be of adults, but police say identification will be difficult. They're checking registers of missing people. Our West of England reporter Steve Scott has the details. Can I use that table? I can't concentrate in there. Shh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Is this the thing you're involved with? It is, isn't it? Yeah, obviously it's Josh. Today, she can't talk about it. The do you think there are more bodies? I bet there are more, though. Most people Police do. Police have also confirmed the man's wife has been released without charge. Indications are that the police operation at 25 Cromwell Street could go on for many more days yet. Can I take just take some details? Jackie will show you out. I know this is distressing, but that information could be very useful. We'll be in touch if we have any news at all. Ready for another session? Yeah. Who's that? Mr and Mrs Goff, Gloucester couple whose daughter had lodged with the West 20 years ago. We found some belongings in the house we think may be hers. You think she could be another victim? Yep. Oh, where's this kind of went? There are three bodies and that's it. Now, I've said I'm willing to sort all that out. And I know it means I'll never be going home again, but I want my garden reinstated and I want Rose and the kids back home. She can't go back home. Why not? You've released Rose. She's in a safe house with May and Stephen. The younger kids are still in care. We're still searching the property. And the fact that we've released Rose doesn't mean that we believe she's innocent. This is all wrong, see? Did Rose know about your relationship with Shirley Robinson? No, she didn't. Oh, Shirley was living under the same roof. Rose must have known she was pregnant. She didn't know I was the father. I suggest that she did. I suggest she was jealous. I suggest she helped you to kill her. 
We found Shirley's body, Fred. I know. It was me who showed you where it was. So, can you explain why the baby wasn't inside her? What? The baby has not been left intact in the abdomen. Time's 11.45. The interview has ended. Back in a minute, Fred. Can you sign this off, Mrs. Leach? I need to speak to you. Yes, Mr. Alton. I need to see that. That would have been Rose. What would? The baby. Are you saying that Rose removed the baby from Shirley's oh. womb? Oh, no, no. Lord, no. Rose's mother, she never do a thing like that. I can't do this. Don't go, please. Give me one good reason why I should stay and listen to this crap. I know you've suffered. You don't know anything about me. I can me. see it in your eyes. I know you've not always been properly loved and respected by men. I've had enough of this. You need to tell the police everything. If you have killed and buried other women, they need to know. The girls' families need to know. I'm not nothing else to Mr. Older and all the police. I'm going and I won't be coming back. You can't leave. You're my appropriate adult. I don't give a shit. No, oh, please, please. Please, Janet, please stay. You're the only one I can trust. On one condition. You tell the police who else you've killed. All right. In writing so you can't backtrack. Got Mr. Ogden in. Mr. Ogden. Yes? Mr. West wants to make a statement. Saying what? Who else he's killed. Really? Well... What, what exactly do you want to say? Go on, Fred. Here, Jerry, come and see you. So what should we put? Um, <clears throat> Go on. I, Frederick West, authorise my solicitor... Authorise my solicitor. Howard Ogden. Howard Ogden. To advise Superintendent Bennett... Superintendent Bennett. ...of... ...of... Uh, ...a further... Eight killings. Eight. All right, nine. Well, is it eight or nine? <clears throat> um, shall we just put a prox? That's it, a prox. Good girl. Of a further nine, a prox killings. Is this his signature? Yes. Because these don't sound like his words. 
Well, we drafted it for him following his instructions. We? He made this admission following a conversation with Mrs. Lynch. I also got him to draw a map. He said that there's a... Uh, some bodies are in the garden, some are under the cellar floor, and there's a body in a field. It's all a bit vague. Others to be identified. We, we, we've already made a start trying to identify who they might be. It's a huge breakthrough, sir. Why did he come out with all of this? I told him that if he didn't start telling the truth, then I wouldn't help him anymore. Well, that could be regarded as putting him under duress. How? I was just being honest. And I told him that it was you he should tell, not me, because what he tells me I have to keep in private confidential. You've done exactly the right thing. I won't have to go to court, will I? Oh, I doubt that very much, Mrs. Leach. You're the appropriate adult. You're here to assist Mr. West. See, the problem I have down here is a high water table. No matter how much concrete you put down, they still get seepage. Right, let's see what I can do for you. Same message from all of them. They're trying to tell me that they're better off where they are. They don't want to be disturbed. This is a pile of crap. Either there are more bodies here or there aren't. He's told us that there are. He better not have come up with those extra nine just to impress you. I don't think he's done that. Huh? All the same, I'd be worried getting too pally with him. I'm not getting pally with him, I'm just trying to help. Dig the floor up. Take the house apart brick by brick if you have to. Yes, sir. This is getting out of hand. People are going to start thinking he's taking a make out of us. Yeah. Can we have a quick chat? How about? The work you're doing with the police. Janet, hi. Kirsty Stevens, the Herald. Fuck off, Kirsty. I'm talking to her. Listen, Janet, before you make any decisions, please talk to me. What do you mean, decisions? Cromwell Street. You clearly know the inside story. Who told you that? We have our ways. We've got nothing to say to. It's me. Hi, how's things? Look at this, it's a Jag XJ6 4.2 litre coupe. What? Yeah, the only six days are made. It's got full leather, automatic transmission, top speed of 120. Immaculate throughout. Not even buying a car. Yeah, he only wants four grand. He only got four grand. We can get it easy. How? The newspapers. Look what came through the door. What? I want to buy your story. It could be worth thousands. I can't talk to the press. I'll bet everyone else is. Who? I don't know, the police. How else all this stuff get in the papers? It's a hell of a story, Janet. It's just been on the news about there being more bodies. Mike, this is ridiculous. So I'm doing this because it's vital not to make money. Bonkers, if you ask me. Well, I'll... I'll have to rustle it up from somewhere else then. Is he all right? No, what do you mean? It's the sort of thing he starts doing. Talking a lot, buying stuff he can't afford. No, he's fine. He's taking his medication. Yet another takeaway. Yeah. 
We had to eat something. How long is this going to go on? I don't know, love. This, you know, right back to boyhood. Every inch, every blade of grass. That's the letterbox field down there. We've come here to search for the remains of your first wife, Fred. We're not sightseeing. I know. It's lovely to get out of that police station, eh, Janet? No God's fresh air. There, mark that then, Darren. Okay. That's it. So, if you take that as your starting point. Wouldn't mind to wander over there too, Janet. Why? Old time's sake. Oh, what's so special about over there? See, I love Rose and I love Greena too, but Anna was the one. Who's Anna? True love of my life. Anna was having a babby too, but that was a babby I wanted. I don't understand. All right. I was just asking Janet about my fish. Fish? My tropical fish. Who's feeding them? Let's get you back to the Nick. He's a, he's a jack specialist. How much was it? Nine grand. Oh, Nine thousand? You can't spend that kind of money on a car. It's fine. I got it on HP. We don't even need another car. And what is going on in here? I got new TV and new video too. Even better deal than the car. I got this new unit to put them on, but they haven't supplied enough fixing Mike, video, so Mike, I've got to date some from this. This and is ridiculous. Oh, We're not getting Mike, Mike. What? We're not getting a new TV or a new car. Have you been taking your lithium? Yeah, of course, yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you haven't. We've been missing days. Yeah, only the old days. You day. can't afford to miss any days, you know that. Right, kids, upstairs. Go on, go! Right, the car is going back. What? And what the TV and back? the video. What? Just sit down. I'm not taking them back. Just sit down. What, going why? Back. Just sit down. Go and sit down. Come on, love. Come on. I'm going to have to get you into the hospital. I'm not going to go and call them now, all right? I warned you. Just stay out of this, Josh. None of this would have happened if you'd been thinking of us. You'd far rather spend time with that murderer. Just leave it, will you, Josh? Oh, hello, yeah, my name's Janet Leach and I'm calling about my partner. Yeah, he's bipolar and he's going into a high and I need to bring him in urgently. He's finally dropped off. He's clear. 
clearly got very overstimulated, though. Now, it could take days, maybe weeks, to get him fully stabilized again. I see. Do you need me to stay? No. Would it be all right if I came back this afternoon about half four? to us and to her daughter. We've got nothing else on her. So unless Fred drops her in it. Charlotte. Ready to crack on? Yeah, well, um, I need to leave about four at the latest because I've got an urgent family matter. That's fine. Did you engage them in sadomasochistic acts? They were adventurous young girls. So how did you end up killing them? You see, you even got the killing wrong. If you're trying to make out that I just went out and blatantly killed people, I wouldn't like that. Enjoyment turned to disaster. I mean, we're all having difficulty understanding this. Especially how these things can have gone on without Rose's knowledge. Rose was out. Out where? Shopping. Whilst you had sex, murdered and buried him, she must have had an awful lot of shopping to do. Well, she does. It's a fair old walk to Tesco. Mary Bastogne, Carol Cooper, Lucy Partington, Shirley Hubbard. The women I just named didn't stay at your house. I don't believe they were known to you in any way. They just disappeared from local bus stops. This has gone on. Did you end up killed? Do you know where you were then, Fred? Let's go through this one more time. Did Rose know about these sexual encounters? She must have known. Did she participate in them? Did Rose kill Charmaine? Rose didn't kill no one. I killed Charmaine when I come out of Leo prison. For the last time, Rose had no part of this. Your loyalty's very touching. Do you think she feels the same about you? Rose loves me. You were so confident about that you didn't mind her having sex with other men. That's correct. So long as you knew about it. I always knew about it. So you knew she was seeing male clients at another premises in Gloucester? What? 22 Sunderland Street. <laughs> That's rubbish. We've spoken to men who met her there for sex. Do you find that upsetting, Fred? There were things in Rose's life you didn't know about. Sexual relationships she kept to herself. No, I don't, because you're making it up. No, I'm not, Fred. Well, no, you are. Rose is all mine, she always has been. And I would know, I'd know here, if that ever changed. Rose is my love, that's what she is. And I am new lot telling me otherwise. Sit down, please, Fred. Fred, you're not helping yourself. The interview is ended at 15.47 by my watch. The suggestion that Rose West was seeing men without Mr. West's knowledge. Do you have any further disclosure about that? Better come to the office. I do want to be sure I'm giving the correct advice. It works off, Janet. I have to. That's all bullshit about Rose seeing other fellas in some place I don't know about. I'm oh, afraid I can't stay and discuss it now. A man needs to know his wife has no secrets from him, doesn't he? Would you keep secrets from your husband? I'm not married. There's still a lucky fella in your life, I can tell that. Mind your own bloody business. Oh, please don't go. Oh, please. Oh, something I want to tell you. It's about Rose. What about her? She was involved. And how many of them? Lots. Things I could tell you about what she'd done to some of them girls. Well, I may have started it, but... She took over and did whatever she liked. I mean it. She'd have took that baby out of Shirley's body, not me. That's the kind of woman she is. If all that is true, 
How can you hold that back from the police? For the sake of the family. I don't understand. We made a pact. I would take all the blame to myself. On the day the police come round with a warrant, I was out. Rose called me to warn me. When I got home, the police gave us five minutes alone together and we agreed then that I'd tell them it was all me. And I know you think it's wrong that Rose gets away with it and I pay the price, but that's the plan we made so she could look after the family and that plan is working, Anna. Why did you just call me Anna? Sorry, I... Janet. I get confused. My mind's spinning with all this... I'm losing everything. Family, my wife, home. And you... You're helping me through the most terrible time in my life. You're my only friend. I'm not your friend. Fred. You are. We're going on a journey together, Janet. Neither of us knows where it's going to end, but... We're on it together. won't be needing you anymore. What? Uh, your services on the inquiry are no longer required. Why? I'm not obliged to give reasons. You can't just drop me without any explanation. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Not now. What do you mean, not now? I can't answer that. Well, clearly you found all this very distressing, but thank you for your help.